We are Hendrik Bauer and Alexander Seidler. <laughs> Our goal is to avoid designing thousands of repository objects by hand and uh, we developed some uh, C++ scripts to generate uh, objects in Analytics Creator repository database um, using our own data warehouse metadata. So, and now so a short introduction. Um, Kulmbacher Brauerei. Um, we have in our IT department a little team for data warehouse. It's a, a small part of it. It consists of me and uh, one colleague and some external support um, from <laughs> specialists like <laughs> Alexander. And in Kulmbacher Brewery, they have a lot of know-how settled in our non-IT departments. They're uh, um, very good. They can design order cubes, they can uh, write spot procedures. Um, so it's uh, for us. Uh, uh, sometimes a challenge to um, fit the needs of our uh, colleagues in the non-IT departments. Myself, I'm uh, Henrik Bauer, Head of Data Warehouse. I did a Master of Computer Science in Erlangen long ago. Uh, I have 20 years experience with Microsoft SQL Server and I'm an <coughs> experienced developer in C Sharp, SQL, and also web techniques. Um, in the last 12 years, I, for mostly developments in uh, SQL, I, I use our own, own framework named uh, GSQL T. It's for kind of templating framework we will see in, in our live demo a little bit. And um, for, for our um, work in Team Data Warehouse, we um, developed also uh, some uh, software to communicate between SQL Server and uh, sub-ECC. Um, with the help of CEO uh, Bolt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm um, Alexander Zeidler, develop, uh, employed at uh, Uberpoint Business Intelligence. Mm, we're a rather small uh, business intelligence consultancy located in Oberfranken and uh, active in uh, yeah, around Bayreuth and Hof, basically. Um, we are specialized on the Microsoft BI stack. So uh, in, regarding uh, AC, we are uh, kind of familiar with the uh, back end there. Yeah. Um, to myself, um, I'm a senior uh, developer and consultant. Um, I love to code, uh, therefore um, it, it's important not uh, only to mention a consultant, uh, being a consultant, but developer as well. Um, yeah, I have uh, around uh, five years of experience in realizing MSPI solutions. Um, I'm a seasoned T-SQL developer, um, lots of uh, prox uh, tables and stuff there. Um, even yeah, small frameworks and projects um, at, uh, for different customers. And um, uh, yeah, two, I'm a, a data vault 2.0. Zero, uh, yeah, I'm not fanatic, but <laughs> I like it, like the approach. Yeah, um, yeah, so far from my side, I guess. Yeah, and here uh, a little picture of our uh, 
Herr Grimes, Kohlmacher Club, uh, we have a lot of brands for beer. Best known should be Menshof. You see uh, some bottles at the top. But uh, our goal is to show you. Oops. Mm -hmm. Our solution. Mm -hmm. um, in in our data warehouse, um, I. Oh. Yeah, so <laughs> my part, <apologies>. yes. <laughs> um, yeah, the data warehouse um, basically consists of uh, two main parts. Um, the first one is uh, the relational SQL Server database, um, uh, which is in the data flow, the, the latter part. Um, the main requirement to the data warehouse database at uh, Kulmbacher Brauerei is uh, provisioning ERP data, uh, mostly ERP, SAP ERP data, to um, yeah non-IT departments um, as reports, for example, or for um, other systems that um, use that data for uh, programmatic um, things. Um, yeah, eighty percent of all tables uh, inside that. Um, um, Data warehouse database are automatically uh, generated automatically from SAP metadata. Um, means that all the layers, um, already all the layers, yes, the staging and um, uh, the basic layers, uh, core layers, um, are generated as well as the procedures which, um, um, yeah, um, pipe that data through. And then, of course, there are a lot of manual additions, um, which are then automatically um, called. Yeah? So it means um, procedures coded by hand that do complicated stuff that is um, cannot be generated automatically, but executed automatically. Mm. In this uh, thing, um, you know, um, regarding SAP, there are a lot of uh, tables and columns. Uh, I think you know, <laughs> um, but um, the data warehouse is restricted to just a small amount of uh, columns that are really needed by anyone, as at least one person. <laughs> and um, there are naming concepts um, of friendly names, uh, which is, I think, in the AC context, um, uh, called friendly names. So there's all. Uh, for example, for an uh, item number, there are a lot of different uh, column names in SAP. And in, in a data warehouse, um, um, regardless of what it's called in the source system, everywhere it should be called item number. Okay. Um, and there's data from other systems as well, such as CRM, which is um, kind of uh, automized um, in the same manner and other completely manual use cases such as uh, Active Directory, um, uh, Ticket System and uh, other systems, smaller, uh, not smaller systems. Mm. The second part is um, uh, from a data flow perspective, the first part, um, it's called uh, SQL and SAP Mirror. Um, it's a self-developed um, solution. The basis is an SQL server database, which kind of mirrors all the SAP data. Um, as SAP is known uh, to be very complicated to connect to. Um, so this is a solution uh, used to provide raw SAP data to uh, other systems which need it. Um, it includes um, historization, means um, it basically uh, detects changes in the data on the basis of a timestamp and um, yeah, detects uh, deleted records. Mm. On top of that, there are views which are, um, can provide uh, only the last, um, let, let's say, subset that changed uh, incremental um, in an incremental way to other systems. Mm. To 
get all that data into uh, from SAP into that SQL or let's say mirror, <laughs> it's a, a bit shorter, uh, into that mirror. Um, there are different solutions. Um, the main solution um, is uh, automatically generate automatic generation of SSIS packages um, that take a few bulk connector as a source. Mm, and then there is um, a um, what is that? It's not listed here. I guess uh, we will talk about that later on. But um, yeah, and then uh, on uh, the SAP side, there are ABAP programs for some tables. Is I think especially uh, fact tables, large uh, tables of um, uh, transactional data, uh, BSEC and uh, BKPF. I guess perhaps it's a name to you. Um, why that? Um, the items, um, the details, yeah, BSEC, they don't hold a timestamp to, to uh, detect um, is this record changed or isn't it? Uh, but the header in BSEC, uh, BKPF, um, holds uh, the timestamp. So a join needs to be made. And um, the decision was the join should be made inside SAP, not outside. Uh, otherwise, it's inefficient um, to get the data out there in, uh, let's say, in a proper amount of time. So there are APA programs for that. Mm, okay, I guess that's it. But um, yeah, what what reasons do we have to evolve our uh, data warehouse? Uh, we have increased complexity, and <clears throat> we have lack of time for further development of our own solution, and we have no user interface for configuration and design tasks. So. Um, we evaluated uh, multiple tools and we find one tool outstanding here. Um, Spoiler. Huh? Hello, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and why? Because we uh, could work on premise. Um, we have no need for cloud infrastructure, but it's cloud ready. Uh, if we one go to cloud with our data warehouse, we could. We have uh, no vendor login. <clears throat> if there are reasons, I know no reason, but uh, if there are good reasons, we uh, would be able to stop using analytics creator and switch to different tools instead. And uh, it supports, I think, the whole and say the whole Microsoft BI stack. So um, it's perfectly fits to our skills. Yeah, and when will we ready to start? We are still in trial phase, but uh, I think by January we are I'm ready to switch our development to analytics creator. Okay. Let's switch to Okay, um, there are two, oh, let's say we identified two um, scenarios uh, which we have uh, to evaluate um, analytics creator for. Scenario one is um, we want to generate most uh, of our metadata repository by program, or let's say automatically. And the second one is um, we want to replace uh, the mirror solution for uh, holistic uh, database uh, data warehouse solution. Um, okay, the presentation focus uh, is on scenario one, but uh, before diving into uh, that, uh, let me just say a few bullet points uh, to scenario two, um, which will be the latest scenario, which uh, we um, yeah, um, do hands on. Mm, there are more than a thousand tables each night uh, that have to be um, yeah, get from the source. Um, from now, um, 
for now, it will be done by the mirror. Uh, later on, uh, then by analytics creator, as soon as we have some experience with it and know how we can uh, efficiently um, source the data we want to have from SAP. Um, what are the uh, yeah the plus points? Um, great knowledge of the about connector within uh, the analytics creative uh, staff. That's uh, a very good thing for us. Um, we are able to um, yeah configure our SSIS packages in a lot of ways. Um, and I think there are good chances we can find um, a way to source uh, our own ABAP programs with uh, in the AC SSIS workflow to speed up uh, already set um, incremental loads from um, large fact tables. Downside, um, we don't ha yet have any idea how we can do um, speed tasks. Um, what are speed tasks in our uh, minds? Um, there are a lot of um, tables within SAP that have less than 100 records in it. Let's say, I think, around 1,000. Mm -hmm. And um, around 1,000 tables. And uh, we um, we had uh, issues uh, with uh, that um, because SIS has a lot of overhead um, to build up a connection. Um, source some data and um, you know close that connection which basically yeah took uh, for 40,000 records uh, three hours yeah that that's a lot due to overhead and then um, we developed the C sharp program that was able to source that 40,000 record from thousand tables in two minutes yeah so that's going to be a challenge but not the focus of the presentation just to name it focus of the presentation will be on the technical understanding of the repository internals and how we can um, provide our own data into that repository to create automatic stuff automatically. Okay, so I yes. guess go on. Let's go on. Um, we, we have some uh, metadata in our own database um, which we use to generate a automatically and we transformed this uh, metadata to fit the needs of uh, analytics creator. So we will show you uh, this live coding, how we do it and um, what kind of data we, we use to generate the objects in analytics creator. And um, I think we go on to to see some live coding again. Then, um... But first of all, uh, how is our um, yeah our code structured? Um, the code which we uh, use uh, that we use for generating all that stuff. Yeah, basically it's all in T uh, um, program in TSQL and located in a database, which is called AC Repository Generator. Um, uh, there are schemas for different kind of uh, 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 yeah, tasks to be done to generate a repository. And um, if there are um, connections necessary to other uh, databases, uh, they are um, yeah, encapsulated in synonyms and uh, special, uh, special schemas to hold that synonyms. Uh, there's one schema um, for DSQLT, which uh, Hendrik uh, already mentioned. I think uh, he will be the one uh, that uh, can, uh, tells you more about it. Uh, um, then there's a schema repository. Um, it holds the logic for generating AZ objects. Um, Start procedures basically. A schema for metadata uh, means information and synonyms to other locations where the metadata is located, which we need to create a repository. Yeah? Which tables, which columns, um, which uh, foreign keys or relations between things, stuff like that. A schema system um, 
logging is located there and uh, some insights into uh, yeah let's say system uh, parameters like uh, uh, data types yeah um, and then there are uh, the schemas uh, CFG config intern metadata and port yeah basically for synonym organization as already mentioned yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. let's go on well, let's go on finally some code <laughs> um, yeah mm, i will switch uh, to azure data studio to demonstrate show you this code um it's the main uh, procedure of our uh, object generating um, and we will step through the um, executes to show you um, what we do in uh, the generating. And after that, we can see in analytics creator the um, generated objects. So, um, um, should I? Is it uh, big enough for you, or uh, must we zoom? In? It's okay. It's, it's, it's okay. nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we. What I copy? Um, so <coughs> executes. Here we um, get our metadata. Um, it's uh, only a part of our um, tables because um, if we generate the whole data warehouse, it would last uh, about 10 minutes for the um, whole procedure. So we um, developed with a subset of our tables. Um, we took all tables with a relationship to Amara, the material um, data in SAP. So we have about uh, 100 uh, tables to work with. Um, we could have a little look to the metadata. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the tables. Uh, you see here some uh, tables from SAP, no? like Mara. Um, we have a description. We um, group our sources um, to different groups. We <coughs> Here we name our import table for um, for staging. We have a package folder uh, for the SSIS package with um, SSIS package variables um, inside, or we. Have here our persisting table and schema, and uh, we group different uh, SSIS transfers to one package. No, you see here we have five um, tables to be transferred in the same package later. We um, import only. Not, delete, not deleted data. We can choose our persisting increment mode. We have mostly we use uh, mode four for our um, SAP data from our MER because um, our sequence server is able to incrementally. Uh, <coughs> provide the new data. So. 
And um, lastly, we have um, the friendly names for the SAP table, like here, uh, Pack Middle Arden in German, or um, Material Kinds. And lastly, we have um, row level security expressions um, with a filter macro, uh, macro from uh, the analytics creator mechanism we, we will see at the UI later. And we group our SSI packages in different workflows to control the, the flow, uh, uh, flow in the night. Right? And maybe we should have a short look at columns. Here we have our types, description, and um, the columns we will present with friendly names to our um, users. They have here um, own names. Um, uh, here we can control up, um, if a column is um, created in core layer or not. And um, maybe we see here some joints. Um, I, I will show you in the UI later. Yeah, this uh, assembles from our metadata, which we imported for the next step. Now we create a repository data. It's empty. You, you will see nothing but the predefined macros here. And now we um, back up the MD database and restore it with a new name as <clears throat> AC Congress demo. Let us see. Um, here we have repo AC Congress demo. It's a new repository we could connect to. And it's uh, empty, of course. <clears throat> yeah. In the next step, um, we will create our macro and the schemas we need to organize our data. And then we create our source layer. For the source layer, we need connections and sources and their columns. Um, and also a references between the source tables and um, the columns to <coughs> which uh, are needed for the reference. Maybe we could show here the start procedure, which um, does this. Yeah to define a connector you need three three um, columns okay. i uh, copy it to 
Kapandı mı? We have uh, connect the name and um, connection string, and that's um, all we need to define the connector. And when we refresh, we should see here our two connectors with. Um, some uh, sources uh -huh. here like mana uh, columns and uh, references to <coughs> other tables oh why don't we see it um, yeah, yes. in the next step, we will um, we'll we'll define um, the staging layer, and then we see um, the objects in at the canvas. Yeah. So here's the next step: um, creating our staging layer. It consists of uh, tables and the columns. Um, we organize the transforms in uh, packages, uh, which need variables and um, references between the table and the sources. And uh, well, let's see it. Let's refresh. And uh, yeah, you yes, see it. You can close our <laughs> thumbnail <laughs> diagram. Uh, just uh, yeah. Yeah, so. Let's have a look to uh, my best friend Mara. We have here all the columns. And, uh, Next, we will have um, a persisting layer to um, persist the imported data. Um, yeah, let's go and create the persisting layer. It needs um, some seconds um, because um, we have to to synchronize um, the repository database with um, a structural copy of the data warehouse. Um, it's a need from analytics creator. Um, I think we can see it in. Uh, management studio. Yeah. Here, analytics creator creates um, a structural copy with the objects. We defined uh, the staging persistent layer. Oh, I think that would be ready. Yeah. Oh, let's see the definition. <coughs> We have to define the transformation from uh, staging to persisting layer. And the uh, table to hold the persisted data. This uh, columns. 
And then <coughs> there is need uh, to synchronize uh, data warehouse. Why? I think we have to uh, ask Dimitri. He, he <laughs> can explain it to us. Uh, but it's necessary. Yes. Okay, it's really necessary because uh, synchronized data warehouse procedure generates the data warehouse uh, containing the same structure like uh, uh, like in the repository and obtain some additional information from this generated data warehouse, either like uh, source uh, column types, uh, dependencies, and so on. Therefore, it is unfortunate. Okay, it's necessary, but it takes time. So really. yeah. um... After that, we are able to, um, to set incremental mode for persisting. Um, we have different approaches. Um, we use in analytics data. I uh, can show you at the UI. Um, it's also necessary to generate for each table, um, it's a persistent procedure. So here we use um, our friend uh, DC OT. I uh, could show you what it does. Yeah. Okay, if I add here um, friend plus one, we should. Yeah, no. Um, this code will execute for each transformation um, in the repository database uh, procedure generate persisting from. No. And now we look at analytics grader and refresh. Not here in the diagram. Yes. Oh, and we see our persisting layer. Um, here is a generated procedure. We have for our Active Directory data, we use a full, full uh, type, means um, the data will be truncated and um, inserted from staging. Old data, huh? no incremental process, and with our SAP tables uh, like Mara, Mara. Uh, it's um, it's another approach. We um, use the type incremental insert only because our our source our SQL submarine is uh, able to um, provide only new changed or deleted data so we can use this incremental insert only and have to delete the new and change data before inserting. So we generate for each um, persisting table this uh, prescript, which um, will be executed by the SSIS package before calling the persisting procedure. Uh, one notice, um, usually uh, our customers use historization to uh, create uh, oh. persistent stage layer, but uh, our <laughs> Klumbacher inside, uh, decided to uh, use their own uh, uh, mechanism to create persistent staging layer. They use uh, our persisting storage procedures. Of course, it is possible, and uh, now we can see how it works. Uh, because it is not necessary to use historization. It is not. Uh, I mean, you can use our historization, but it is not uh, obligat uh, obligatory. Not mm -hmm. necessary. You can use such a uh, persistent algorithm to uh, create a persistent station player. Yeah. Okay, Timothy. It's um, it's also uh, possible, of course, to. Um, 
make historical um, persisting layer, but we decided not to use it um, because our sequence submer um, provides a data historical. Exactly. Good. So um, now we need uh, a layer for for the um, for our users, no, to get data into reports, Excel, or so on. We we have two kinds of layer. Um, the one is so-called raw layer. We we provide the um, the SAP structure as it is um, because we have some power users or business consultants who are very fami familiar with um, these structures. Um, okay. okay, let's create the one layer very fast and um, the next step is um, creating core layer where we use the friendly names um, we have seen like uh, allgemein und materialstamm no? uh, general material data and um, column names like material number In our core layer, we have also um, row-level security in uh, some tables. Uh, we have so-called security tags in our data, which is um, calculated from um, information like uh, Buchungskreis or Verkaufsorganisation or sales organization and so on. And we could restrict the user to the organizational structures they are allowed to see. It's um, also possible with analytics creator. And um, if, it, if it is ready, we uh, will look in our UI. Already. <laughs> not really. Let's wait, wait a little bit. Unfortunately, we have to change the system. It's, uh, um, it's not as fast as our um, data warehouse server, <laughs> so we have to wait a little bit. Ah, now it's ready. You see, we get also transformation, the tables, the columns. References to other tables and um, the calls to the repository database like synchronous errors. And now I hope we could refresh in analytics creator and see our call layer. And now, Mara. What else? Um, here is the raw raw view for SAP data. It's um, not with friendly names, but the original data structure of uh, SAP. And here you see the view 
Material Wheel data with um, friendly column names, maybe some uh, expressions or columns from other tables like uh, our spend number. You could see here the joint tables. And um, the references we defined in the source layer um, are used here from analytics data to join the different tables. Maybe we should uh, fill them here. No? No, no, you can see it. This is the path to our view material. Yeah. So, the last part we have to do is uh, create and deployment. So, it's two steps. We need a, a script for, I will show you in analytics data, and um, we have to create deployment. Um, in the deployment, we uh, need to define which packages will be called by which workflow and if I refresh here and uh, remove the folder, I can show you the deployment. This is um, the main deployment we generated. All the packages. Um, here we have um, partly deployments. Um, we find to call only a part of our packages. With this workflow. Oh. We have um, generated um, here this procedure creation script where we can um, determine the, the maximum transfer ID in, in our data, which we need for the incremental data transfer. And we set here the package variables in the table SSIS configurations. So, yeah, we have here all tables. And uh, <coughs> what did we see? Do we have some tables? No, macros. Now we have here our security text folder as um, macro defined. And we uh, could see more the packages for importing data and for persisting data. And from the actual package. And here, in the layer, we are transformations. Yes, um, what you see here is only um, a little part of our data warehouse data. 
because we've restricted it for development purposes to all tables um, in relationship to model. Um, but I think I can show you the whole generated um, data warehouse structure. But the thumbnail uh, wouldn't Okay, let's see, this is um, the objects we generated for the whole data we have loaded. Yeah. Um, okay. um. Well, I guess that's it. Uh, we're done uh, demonstrating uh, automation, uh, automizing the automization tool. Uh, <laughs> and uh, any questions? Oh, Dimitri has uh, raised. His Thank hand. you very much. No. <laughs> Welcome. I mean, <laughs> I mean. Just thank you very much for this uh, very interesting demo because uh, it's really the way how to create a metadata repository only using uh, uh, coding without uh, to do something uh, manually and uh, very interesting approach uh, and uh, because the same repository um, containing uh, thousands of the tables and different logic and so on to create manually would take several weeks i think uh, and uh, using this approach uh, you can create such repository uh, much faster of course and uh, it's a very interesting approach thank you very much thank you too it was a really great presentation yeah thanks <laughs> Thanks Thank you for your time and your presentation.